Welcome to Quills and Cliffhangers, the podcast that reviews the best of vintage and modern literature. Quills and Cliffhangers is produced by Steve's Book Decor, your resource for decorative book sets for home, office, and weddings. And now, the host of our program, Jane, our Director of Marketing, with today's show. Hello everyone. With the passing of author Sue Grafton a few weeks ago, I wish to pay tribute to this great master of modern murder mysteries. The mystery genre has its own canon, a set of built-in expectations for the audience. Classic whodunits, as established by 1930s and 1940s novels and their Hollywood adaptations, are exciting adventure stories. While these aren't hard and fast rules, mystery writers typically include the following elements in their novels. Number one, a sense of dramatic tension from page one telling us that something unforeseen is about to transpire. Number two, after introducing the characters and the setting, the author shakes things up with a jarring crime, for example, a murder. Number three, the plot revolves around identifying the murderer. The tricky part is that the killer could be any one of several possible suspects, or even a team of collaborators. Number four, the unraveling of the mystery is presented through the eyes of the detective called in to solve the crime. Often the protagonist is a police officer or a psychiatrist who is familiar with the workings of the criminal mind. Number five, the detective collects and analyzes clues and pieces of evidence, many of which are red herrings designed to throw the reader off track. However, an important snippet of information on page 12 of the novel may come in handy on page 200, so the reader has to stay sharp. Number six, the detective identifies the character who had the motive, the scheme, the method, and the opportunity to commit the murder. Number seven, realizing that the hero is close on his trail, the criminal attempts to make the detective his next victim. Number eight, the detective summons all the suspects together and points an accusing finger at the murderer. What makes a successful mystery novelist stand out from the pack? It's the ability to transform the basic structure of the whodunit into something unique that fulfills and exceeds the expectations of the audience. And that is what Sue Grafton accomplished in her long and amazing career. Sue Grafton was born in 1940 in Louisville, Kentucky. She was destined from an early age to become an author, and her career was an exciting journey toward that goal. Encouraged by her crime novelist father, C.W. Grafton, she began writing when she was 18. As many authors discover, the art of writing is best learned from the practice of creating one story after another. And so she wrote several novels, publishing her first at the age of 27. Then she diverted her energy into building a screenwriting career. Among her notable projects, she collaborated with her husband, Stephen Humphrey, on script adaptations of Agatha Christie's A Caribbean Mystery and Sparkling Cyanide. Sue Grafton achieved phenomenal success when she resumed writing mystery novels. She hit upon the idea 
of naming her stories after the letters of the alphabet. The first book in the series was A is for Alibi. The heroine of her alphabet mystery novels is a private investigator and former cop, Kinsey Milhone. Kinsey is a brilliantly complicated character. She survives being orphaned at an early age, grows up and navigates several career changes and troubled relationships, and finally blazes a trail through life on her own terms. The action in the Kinsey Milhone novels is set in Santa Teresa, California. I have heard that Santa Teresa, a fictitious place, was based on Santa Barbara. This is indeed possible for this beautiful West Coast town, located about a 90-minute drive north of Los Angeles, was also Sue Grafton's home for many years. In addition to winning numerous awards for her writing, Sue Grafton became one of the most beloved authors of our time. She has many loyal readers around the world. Her novels have been published in 28 countries and translated into 26 languages. Sue Grafton published the 25th book in the Kinsey Milhone series, Why is for Yesterday, in 2017. It is unfortunate that she did not live long enough to complete the final book in the series, the Z volume, before passing at the age of 77. We have one of Sue Grafton's best-selling novels in stock. It's M is for Malice. The story is about a wealthy man who dies and leaves his multi-million dollar estate to be divided among his four sons. Kinsey Milhone is hired to track down one of the heirs, the black sheep of the family. M is for Malice, like all of Sue Grafton's mysteries, is a well-crafted, suspenseful page-turner filled with memorable characters. I will wrap up this tribute to Sue Grafton with my favorite quote from this amazing author. I've learned to trust my own instincts, and I've also learned to take risks. Thanks for tuning in. On behalf of Steve's Book Decor, I look forward to visiting with you again. Until next time, Remember to keep your nose in a book and your thoughts in the clouds. The Quills and Cliffhangers podcast is produced by Steve's Book Decor, sellers of fine collectible antique and vintage books. Our store is open 24-7 for your shopping convenience at www.stevesbookdecor.fc.com.